episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. How are you? I'm pretty fucking decent. How are you? <laughs> Good, man. Hey, good to talk to you again, brother. What's going on? Uh, you too. You too. What's going on? All good? Uh, yeah, yeah. Day number uh, seven of ISO, but I'm doing okay. <laughs> oh, shit. That's the, that's the way it is, huh? Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm doing all well, right. Well, we're, we're all going to be there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hey, knock on, knock on the wood, man. <laughs> I was there. I had mine in in Thailand, so you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw it. Yeah. So, so you went on holidays and just did you have it though? You didn't get. Yeah, I was. I, well, at least I was locked up in a room with guards for ten days. So. Dude, dude, were you all right? You haven't had any lasting sort of effects or anything like that. No, I, I doubt I even had it. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. That's really good. I think so it's I, I think it's a business uh, move from the Thai government to rip people off money. Unfortunately. Oh, that sucks. That sucks. But I'm I I don't have it. But my my wife and my son have. It. Ah. So okay. I'm. Well, you're getting there. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm exiled on this side of the house. So. so <laughs> my text. <laughs> I mean, today hopefully it's like in in Sweden it's not even considered a health hazard well, uh, anymore. But we have a good spread here from the beginning, so we never closed down. So we have had a different approach, I guess. Yeah, way different. Way different from us. Yep. People cough and everyone runs for the hills here. <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, well. But uh, hey, man, it's it's definitely awesome you could join us on the show again. Of course, the new Evergrey album, A Heartless Portrait, the Orphean. Is it pronounced Orphean Testament? Yes. I got it. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I guess we should ask the Greek how it's uh, pronounced, since it's uh, from the Greek mythology. But I mean, I guess Orpheus is the great pronunciation. But it. yeah, like whatever. It. It's way better <laughs> how you say it. <laughs> I said on my twenty, I've been lucky enough to hear it. I've been cranking it, man, and uh, it's just incredible. Dude, Thank you. Oh, so good. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, happily surprised ourselves. No, but I mean, we're like. Um, we worked really hard for the last couple of years um, and deciding straight after the Phoenix album that we should start uh, doing a new one since we figured out <laughs> miraculously <laughs> that we would probably not be playing that much live. So we figured let's let's switch labels and let's uh, make another album quite fast. And this is, yeah, the quickest turnaround we've had so far. So It's insane, dude. Like, Thank you. Thank you. We were just talking about, you know, we were only just talking about um, Phoenix, like, not long ago. And now you're like, oh, no, here's something new. <laughs> yeah. Just as good, man. Were those songs sort of written in the same time frame or is it a whole new writing session? I did a whole new writing session, but it started the day after Phoenix came out. So we just did a couple of music videos in between. I did a Silent Skies album in between and a Redemption album in between and some other stuff. So... Yeah, busy days, but yeah, totally fresh uh, writing session. We went back to our caves and started writing our own ideas, and then we met up after a couple of months and just uh, started hammering it out. I mean, this is the best thing you can do in life is to create music, so we're just fortunate enough to have the t time for the first time in our lives. Uh, we're <laughs> not touring, you know, and trying to squeeze in the music in between, you know. Do you think that's made a big difference? I can hear that it's it's all killer no filler. Do you yeah. think it's made a difference for you from your perspective having that, you know, obviously it's it's a bummer that you, you couldn't go out and tour, but you went straight into writing and you had those creative juices going. Do you think that, that had a big impact on it? Absolutely. And I f sort of figured it out now. Done uh, Since I've done six albums in the last 20 months, it's like uh, for me, it's I figured out, I think, like a, maybe a world revolutionary thing for neural psychology that <laughs> that I, I think the area in your brain that is responsible for creativity grows bigger and demands more the more you write. 
uh, at least that's the way it's functioning for me because usually as an artist you're scared to have you know sort of let the world run dry in a sense you know so yeah. uh, but uh, no totally the opposite uh, the more i write <laughs> the more my brain wants me to write and luckily enough it's also sounding pretty good to other people as well it's a good problem to have dude <laughs> that it is that it is there are bigger problems in life for sure that's right that's right but i love the way it, the album kicks off as well um with the opening of save us no messing yeah. around it just boomed straight into it. i had my headphones on yeah and scared the shit out of me <laughs> <laughs> i was like okay cool expecting maybe a little bit of, but bam straight in no. and uh just comes blasting through it's it's such a good solid opener it's also one of those so thank you and it's also one of those songs that when i wrote the um, when i wrote the vocal melody line for for the chorus i immediately knew that this would be a song that would be sort of with us for for a long time mm -hmm. i think that's what's going to happen because it's a, if i may say so myself that that melody line is different than what i usually do and it's so sophisticated in its turns and swirls and and it's um yeah, and that's I think is the also the reason for this album sounding like this is that I have really felt that I have had the ch chance to do everything with every single note in the in the way that I wanted to be. You know, some some of the uh, parts are sung two verses in a row and a chorus in between, and some things I worked my ass off making it sound like it does. So. Comparing albums, you know, going on tour and having other albums in between, we have still always given it 100% and we're all, always 100% content and satisfied with what we, you know, put out there. Uh, but it's been on the expense of us many times, you know, that we have sort of worked ourselves to the bone, basically. And now we have been able to do so and still be happy in our personal life as well, you know, so it's, it's a win-win. Yeah, man. And, and uh, I do like how you pulled in all your fans to contribute yeah. to too. That's, yeah. I don't think anyone's been doing that. No, that was a fucking brilliant idea I had, to be honest, patting myself <laughs> on the back. I'm pretty fucking smart. <laughs> no, but I mean, I was walking around and I usually sing all of my stuff into this iPhone, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and then I'm I'm sort of impressed of the sound quality in terms of compression and, and, and so and so on with the iPhone's um, recordings. So I started thinking that maybe we should use this because I've already I had already done that save us part um, but by myself uh, and together with the other guys in the band 20 times. But then we decided let's make this like a co-creation thing with the f fans and friends that we have all around the world and they can send in their stuff and film themselves and you know it was a cool thing and now we, then we had hell in the studio trying to line everything oh. up <laughs> but i mean because it's sev several hundred of them that are also having their names in the booklet now you know as choir singers so it's yeah. pretty cool that is, uh, that is a cool thing but i could imagine it being a nightmare or uh, for being an engineer, sitting there going, "Okay, cool. How many how many tracks have we got? Deal. Let's several hundred. Let's." Hey, and it's actually me telling myself that and Jonas. So we're the engineers for this album. So it's oh, like, oh, really? It was you guys? <laughs> yeah, engineers and producer. We didn't mix it, but we were highly highly involved. Yes. Ah, I see. All right, cool, cool. Let's. <laughs> yeah, and then we did the same thing for the midwinter calls as well. We then, there we recorded. Uh, the live audience in in Sweden and Stockholm and and uh, in Gothenburg, Stockholm and Karlstad, and and put them on a studio album. So that was also pretty cool. Because you played shows at the end of last year, right? Yeah, You're playing. And that was in the midst of recording this album. So we figured, let's record them. Let's teach them the the part for one minute, and then we sing them. We sing it. We sing it over and over until we have it, and then we just. Put all of that together and that's how it sounds so huge today is it something you want to maybe explore further in 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 the future i don't know i think maybe we have maybe we've done maybe it's you know run its course now <laughs> let's see i don't know you could you could bump it up to a few thousand i reckon 
Yeah, probably. I mean, uh, let's do that. That's my live live vision, you know. Yeah, so yeah. at least people know what to do now. <laughs> That's it. Just get someone else to mix it. And mo- and <laughs> for for, da- for damn sure. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, of course, I mean, the video for Save Us uh, is incredible, and uh, the one for Midwinter Call, man, they look incredible. How was it filming those? I mean, you guys took a little bit of a, a beating. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We uh, we told those fucking guys to be as brutal as they as they can, and when they went too far, we screamed stop. <laughs> you know, so <laughs> it's. I mean, it needs to look real. You can't fake it. It, it. it. And it's also a cool idea that we have had that we 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 present this storyline now in the reverse order. So have you seen now? You've seen chapter three and chapter two and. The next one, of course, will reveal what it is that we have revealed to the world to get us in this situation. Yeah. When's that? When, when's that coming out? I guess a month or so. Yeah. Oh, so it was all filmed yeah. together. We haven't filmed the last one yet. We're we're doing that. It's usually we usually film and then we work our asses off until the last minute, up until it goes up on YouTube, and and then it's <laughs> you know. <laughs> Well, in regards to the title, you know, we're talking about, uh, you know, the reference to Orpheus, the musician and prophet in Greek mythology. Yeah. Uh, what's what's the meaning behind the title and how's it tie in with, with that? I mean, the heartless part is about me sort of, it's my testament to the world are these 13 albums now where I've been sort of speaking somewhat carelessly about myself and my environment and, and my upbringing and how I see myself not fitting in a world where I don't want to fit in anymore either because it's like some parts of this world is just getting more hostile and violent and 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 egotistic and and that's the aspect of of uh, Orpheus everybody sort of in the Greek Greek mythology they're sort of praising him as a fantastic he wrote songs that uh, were so beautiful people gods cried and you know and that's that part we can tie into Evergrey. We write also songs in minor, you know, which is because he's crying because he lost his wife in the, in the in the flames of hell. But it was his fault. He only had to keep on walking, right? Mm. And he decided uh, for himself that he, he needed to have a look, right? And so he's a, was a in my in my interpretation, he's an egotistic bastard, right? That lost the love of his life because he couldn't. St- stop himself from turning his head and that's also my view on lots of what's going on in the world right now we're so short turned you know that uh, that uh, we, we don't really care about anyone else but ourselves uh, and the and that end game you know the end game is ourselves uh, instead of letting it be Humanity. I mean, if you would ask the people in Ukraine right now what is important in life, I would tell you that they probably wouldn't mention TikTok, Instagram, or Facebook. That's for damn sure. Yeah, 100%. 100%. If there's anything that we should have learned as a species over the last two years alone, yeah, you know, it's, it's just madness, man. Absolute madness. Yeah, it is. It's total madness. It really, it really is. Right. Yeah, it's heartbreaking to watch all that stuff. And I know you're probably closer to it all, all over there, man. You know? Yeah, it's 500 kilometers away. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable that such a thing can go on in, in, in a modern world outside our doorstep, pretty much. Yeah, it's, uh, it's just, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. But yeah, um, it is. <clears throat> In regards to the album and and the special edition of it, you know that wooden box is incredible too. How did you piece that? To, well, you didn't make it yourself, but you pieced it there. I, I was sitting here with my hammer and my nails, yeah, <laughs> holding everything. Uh, no, but I mean, I mean, I'm involved in every aspect of every of every release of every. Day. Some things are more important. Some things are you know uh, less important. But uh, all of these things that sort of present Evergrey in a, in, and that people are putting money on, I think it's important that they look good and uh, it's cool, you know. It's, uh, yeah, it's incredible, dude. Like, so I'm involved, most definitely, yeah. 
Yeah. So we, so when you come up with ideas for that, do you sort of just write them down and sort of and go? Oh, this write is it down. Do yeah, the, and the they run it through with the label, and then we talk about it. And they say, no, it's too expensive. No, it's too expensive. No, it's too expensive. And it's like, tell me what's not expensive, <laughs> and they show me, and it's like. That looks like shit. You need to make something more <laughs> expensive. And then we go on like that for a month or two. And then we sort of end up with what you guys get now. So, so <laughs> what's it, talking about things that have been too expensive. Has there been an idea that you've gone, I really want to do this? And they've gone, you can't yeah, do yeah. it. Every time. <laughs> every time. <laughs> yeah, every time. It's like everything from... Oh, I can't even remember through the years. It's been so many things, but the, most of them things have gone cheaper to produce <laughs> during the time that we have. So nowadays I ha can have what I wanted to have 10 years back, <laughs> like flags and time glasses and necklaces and belt buckets and all of those things. All the cool stuff. Beforehand, it was too expensive. No, it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's true though. I, remember, I can't remember which band it was. And they brought out bikes like a bicycle, mm -hmm. and I was like, "How, how, <laughs> like, how do you even ship that?" <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. What's the like? You, do you have to like build it yourself? I, I thought it was insane. That's insane. it's like an IKEA bike. That's what we should do. You put it together yourself. It comes in a box this big, and then it's like a full size bike. Man, crazy. It's crazy. You even get the air in a tube, you know, for the. Yeah, you need a pump. No, the pump's missing. The pump's always missing. There's something missing. Yeah, those sure. white packs. And then someone's. <laughs> usually me and my wife's going, calm down, sit in the corner, I'll do it. But. um, I hate it. <laughs> you're going to be. It. You hear yeah, me too. You're going to be doing some live acoustic stuff for like the release party, which I think is a really, really good idea. So the fans can, you know, reconnect and get stuff signed. Yeah. It's an awesome, and it's also a different perspective of Every Grey, where we show the songs in their sort of bare selves, you know, uh, how they were intended from the start. Not not intended, but how they sounded from the beginning, pretty much. If a song works in an acoustic, stripped-down environment, then you know it's a good song, right? Mm. So some of the songs are, of course, <laughs> not going to work in a acoustic version, you know, but... Uh, Lots, lots of songs that we have made are will. So yeah, it's it's a it's a nice, relaxed way to sort of also kick off a new era of an album together with um, the the closest fans we have had in, in in this country. Is that how the songs usually begin? Is an acoustic guitar for you? Never. <laughs> <laughs> how the hell do you re, re you got to re reverse engineer them? I guess. Yeah, I mean, no, I actually often starts with the keyboards, to be honest, for me. Yeah. I often start writing on the keyboards and then, uh, I mean, obviously those songs that are acoustic guitars, like the Wildfires on this album, it, it, I started writing on on, on, um, on an acoustic. But um, no, very rarely, I don't sit and sort of, uh, what do you call it, buy a fireplace and write uh, <laughs> strumming guitar riffs. <laughs> And you got a big, you got a big tour coming up as well. You got some big shows. Yeah, I mean we got a long ass tour coming up in September. I think uh, uh, hopefully, if it uh, if COVID won't stop us, it, it's it looks like. I mean we moved it moved it five times, four four times, but the last time we moved it fourteen months. You know, so we moved it from last July to September uh, this year. So uh, hopefully. Because all of the venues are booked now for years, you know. You you so that was a smart move from us actually. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, is it hard? I mean, you're saying that you know the venues are booked for years. Is it yeah. a lot harder to 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 book tours and stuff now? Do you think that's going to be something you guys have to navigate from here on out? I mean, at least this coming two years. But then we're we're pretty much going to be one of the first bands out there, I guess, that does a full. European tour if this World War three isn't coming or you know if this COVID bubble bursts but I mean uh, so yeah that's what we'll hope hopefully we, we, we will get to do that and then we'll try to sort of 
ho- hope to watch the world open and and uh, that we can go back to a new normal and uh, you know fl- come to Australia and fly to US and go to South America and all of these places. I mean, we have two albums to promote now, so it's like we're gonna be out there for a while. This might be my last effort uh, musically. <laughs> I oh, feel I'm yeah. getting old. If I'm gonna <laughs> tour now for four years, you know, I'm gonna. Oh, that's come gonna on, kill mate. Me. If Keith Richards like 102, I'm sure you could do it, bro. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's a bit a bit of a success difference. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, you're you're a busy dude. Obviously, you keep yourself really busy. You've got like all these projects, Redemption, you got Silence, got you know how how are things looking for you in the future with those projects now? I mean, we just did. I mean, I feel like I've been in a long uh, re- recording period. I mean, I've done two Silent Skies albums and two Evergrey albums and one Redemption album in the last 20 months. So in a sense, it's like, I mean, this is what I am now until we get back to touring. This is what I am. I'm just a studio writer, musician, but I also make computer game music for a company called Saber Interactive. So that. I also done three video games this year, so it's like, uh, or not this year, but the, 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 yeah, yeah, the, yeah. this last 20 months. So it's like, um, I'm just fortunate enough to be able to work with the things that I love to do. You know, it's uh, amazing. What games were they? Uh, so far, or the latest ones, World War Z, uh, Evil Dead, the game is not coming out, has not come out yet. Uh, and uh, Dakar Rally is one of the games oh, on the top of my head. That's bro. Super, but... bro. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's rewind that one. Holy shit, dude. Yes, sir. So if you watch that trailer, official trailer, that's the music. That's how we got the gig, actually. We wrote the music for that trailer. And uh, so, yeah. Hails. Dude, that's massive. Yeah, it's cool. So yeah, it's they, a, uh, World War Z was, was number one on stream. You know, it's like oh, Steam, Stream. What is it, Steam? Yeah, Steam. it's like yeah, yeah. being number one on Billboard. I never been number one on Billboard, but this just passed. You know, in through this ear and out through the other, and it's like yeah, whatever. I gotta do this next time. <laughs> this is like, like, yeah, thanks, mate, mate. I can't wait to play that. But um, of course, dude, remember- it lo- looks amazing. Hail to the king, baby. But uh, Australia, you mentioned Australia before. Is that plans? I mean, we're just waiting for the right promoter to get us over there. It's been fucking too long. And we've only been there once. So, I mean, it's about that time, I think. So Overdue. Overdue, for sure. Well, overdue. Well, dude, it's been awesome hanging out with you again. It's been a little while, as we mentioned. And uh, we we'll have to have to keep it, uh, keep it up. Do another one. Yeah, man. Time. <laughs> Wait 11 months and you will get another album. So <laughs> <laughs> We've got lots coming out, man. We'll just... Uh, it yeah. I'm set for a few months at least. So yeah. That's all good. That's <laughs> well, of course, we'll have all the links down here. Uh, man, you take care of yourself. Stay safe over there and uh, keep in touch, bro. Thanks for having me, man. <laughs> no have a good worries. day. Good night. Uh, Bye-bye. It is, yes. It is, yes. See you, yes, bro. Yes. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Bye.